all right just a quick reminder all right um the footage that i'm about to show you guys is not me trying to show off or boast about how good i am at football games or anything like that um, this is just an idea that my uncle gave me three months ago at first i thought it was a little too much and a little too extra but then you know as I, as the weeks were going by and i started thinking about it you know since i've been thinking of ways to improve my content for you guys i was like then that's when I started to realize that, you know, it, it actually might not really be a bad idea to reach the Lost. You know, since the Lost love video games and they idolize video games, unfortunately. You know, and I can kind of relate to that because I was the ones like that as well. If I was a Lost person um, listening to someone preach while playing, while showing footage of their gameplay, whatever game they're playing, I'd also take an interest, you know, I'd also take an interest and I'd be lured in, you know. So that's the aim of this method that um, I'm using, all right, that my uncle gave me three months ago, all right. So I just wanted to put this short reminder in. Um, I hope you take something from the uh, from the teaching. I hope you learn something from the teaching. And let's dive right into the teaching right now. Enjoy. All right, so for those of you that don't know, I decided to go through with, uh, with this gaming um, method to try to reach the lost so that's what i'm going to be doing i don't know if i'll be doing it every week but i'll try to do it every week once a week all right i thought i was going to be able to do it twice a week but um it's not as easy as it looks all right so um this video is going to be a bit controversial all right just like what you're seeing in the title all right we're in debt Okay, each and every one of us are in debt. Now, what do I mean by that? There's this illustration that I got from this guy that I was watching yesterday. All right, and I thought I would just share this message. Um, I forgot his name because I don't watch him often. But, um... Because Jesus Christ, all right, what I mean by what I mean is that ultimately... And Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price for our sins, all right? So he paid the ultimate price that we couldn't pay, all right? But um, because we're still sinful, unfortunately, a lot of us, we go on sinning. So I want you to think about um, your credit card. Think, if you, think about your credit card or your debit card, right? So when you swipe... To buy something right this is more like an illustration of like um, constantly giving into sin thinking that the Lord is okay with it yes God is merciful God is loving and he's full of grace but don't fall into the illusion that God is okay with everything you do because he's not so think about when you swipe your credit card, all right? Think about when you're swiping your credit card, you buy chocolate, or you buy a couple of clothes, or um, you eat out, all right? You're just constantly swiping and swiping, all right? So you buy a chocolate bar, or you buy a new t-shirt, or new shoes, and you're like, and then you'll be like, you know what? That was actually good. I want to go do it again. That's how sin is like, right? It's like you're swiping and swiping, but what you don't realize, all right, what you don't realize is how much depth you're actually going into. Now, this is to the people that are not necessarily born again. This is to the people who are professing Christians, all right? If you profess Jesus Christ, all right, you should not necessarily be having... Um, a desire to just carry on going on sinning okay you should instead be having the desires to turn away from your sins so yes we all sin we all fall short from time to time but then there are those Christians there are those people that those professing Christians that still love their sin they still love to sin against the Mosai and they take advantage of God's mercy and God's grace and God's love and you take that for granted all right, what you don't understand and what you don't realize is that you're storing up wrath for yourself. That's the depth that I'm talking about. That's the depth that I'm, that, that I'm, that I'm talking about right now. 
I hope you see the point I'm trying to make and I hope you see the point I'm trying to put down. You're storing up wrath for yourself. All right. The wrath is the depth. That's why Jesus says that he's uh, Jesus says that God is angry with the wicked every single day. All right. If you profess Jesus, then you cannot be acting wicked. And you cannot be having these evil, sinful desires. All right. Not that you won't experience them from time to time, but what I'm talking about is that if you're comfortable, if you're still comfortable in your sin, and you're still comfortable with your lifestyle, you might want to reevaluate. Because like what it says in Romans 2 verse 5, all right, it says, but because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you're storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay each person according to what they have done. To those who, who by persistence in doing, in doing good seek glory, honor, and immorality, he will give eternal life. Do you understand? Do you see that? So the scripture says it for himself. All right. It's not that you're perfect. I'm not trying to, I've said this many times, I'm not trying to preach a message of perfection. And I'm not saying that you have to walk this Christian walk perfectly. That's not what I'm trying to say. But your desire, all right. Like what it says here in Romans, your desire, all right, should be to do good. You should be, your desire should be um, doing good and, and seeking glory, honor, and immorality, all right. So basically, to give God the glory for your life, that should be the desire to do good as much as possible. Not that works get you saved, all right, but it's about taking on the mind of Jesus Christ. It's about love. It's about beginning to love what he. It's about beginning to help him, uh, to help, to help, to let him help you love what he loves, and hate what he hates. And the number one thing that God know that God hates obviously is sin. All right. So let's carry on reading from verse eight. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. And that's to many professing Christians today. It's not just to the lost world, even to the professing Christians. All right. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For God does not show favorism. All right. God has no respect of persons. All right. So this doesn't mean that you'll never sin again. This doesn't mean that you'll never have an evil thought. But if there's no conviction, if, if, if you really are enjoying your sin and seeking after the pleasures of this world and the satisfactions of this world and the gratifications of this world, more than you enjoy seeking after Christ, you just enjoy seeking after sinful desires and sinful pleasures, then what does that say about your life? What does that say about your life? The other problem, not just with the lost world, but with most professing Christians, is that you think you have all the time in the world. All right. You think you have all the time in the world to get right. You think you have all the time in the world to really start following Jesus. You think that, oh, you know, I'll do it when I'm in my 30s. I'm still young. I still want to have fun. Oh, I'm do it, I'll do it when I'm in my 40s, you know. I'll do it when I'm 45 or even when I'm 50 or something like that. You think you've got all this time, man. You think you've got all this time. But the thing is, and God forbid, do you really know how long you're going to live? Do you really think you're going to be alive next year? Do you know if you're going to be alive next year? Do you know if you're going to be alive even next month? Do you know even if you're going to be alive tomorrow? God forbid. That, that nothing happens to you, but I'm just saying. You think you, how, you think you, you, you think you're in complete control of your life? No, you're not. Because just like what it says in Hebrews 9, verse 27, just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment, all right, there's an appointment for you. And you don't know when that appointment is. 
Because here's the thing, all right, it says here in 28, so Christ was sacrificed in Hebrews 9 verse 28, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. So if you're not waiting for Jesus, if you're saying that I'll wait until I'm this age or that age, until I'm 30, 35, 40, 45 or 50 to live for Jesus, I'm still young, I'm still a teenager, you know. I'm still a young adult. I want to live my life. I want to do this. I want to do that. You're making a grave mistake. Because you don't know when your appointment is going to be. You're not in as much control as you think you are. And as a matter of fact, you're not in control at all. You're not in control at all. All right. So saying that you're going to wait for this long or that long, it's pointless. Turn to Jesus now and really start living for him. Don't just profess him. I'm not saying you, ha you have to work for anything or you have to try to earn anything. All right. You already have the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus wants you more than anything. And he wants relationship with you. All right. It's already yours. You just have to claim it and turn to him. And repent and turn away from your sins. All right. Do a 180 degree. All right. Because just like what it says here in um, Telosians, 2 Telosians 1 verse 1, 1, chapter 1 verse 8 to 9. It's like what it says in the, in, all right. Um, just like what it says in the, in the scripture. All right. If you do not turn away from your sins and if you decide to carry on running from him and carry on doing the things of this world, partying, drinking, smoking, all right, I'm having sex outside of marriage, basically fornicating, all right, and following your own selfish desires and and being self-seeking and, and self-centered and, you know, just um, just making yourself your own God and only living for yourself, all right. He says he will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. All right. Look, Jesus loves you. All right. And he wants you more than anything, just like what I said just now. But are you taking his kindness for weakness? Are you taking his mercy for granted and his mercy and his grace? Are you taking all those things for granted? Are you taking his love as a ticket for you to carry on sinning and carry on doing what you want? Are you taking all these things as a gateway and a ticket? His love, his grace, his love, his grace and his mercy for you to just carry on sinning and living however you want to live. If you're in Christ, you need to understand that Christ has got standards. It's been a while since I did a video like this, but we need to talk about this. Or we need to talk about this. Too many times people just want to, you just want to focus on the mercy and the grace of Jesus Christ. But what you don't understand and what you don't realize is that God also has standards. God has got standards. All right. He, that's why he makes it very clear. He's making it very clear here in Telosians. All right. That he will punish those that do not know him and do not obey the gospel of our, of, of, of him all right of our lord he's making it very clear the problem with too many professing christians is that you know of god you believe him you might know his word you might know his um word from back to front but do you actually know him do you actually obey his gospel? Do you actually obey his commandments? And listen, we can't all we can't keep all the commandments, unfortunately. That's why once again there is grace and there is mercy. But do you try? Do you put all your faith and all your hope in him? Or do you or are you like a Pharisee? You just know scriptures and but you don't obey them? You know of God, but you don't actually know him. You don't actually have a personal, intimate relationship with him. It's just something to think about. All right. Because I feel like it's not something that's talked about a lot. 
Too many times we just want to focus on the love and the grace and the mercy of God. Which is um, the main focus, but <laughs> because the, the Bible is not a rule book, you know, it's a, it's a love letter. All right. God loves you more than you can, you can imagine. God loves you more than you can comprehend. But at the same time, time is ticking and his wrath, his cup of wrath, it's almost full. All right. It's almost full. And he's definitely angry. At the wicked every single day every day and he hates sin he despises sin there's nothing more that he hates and resents more than sin so take that seriously all right that's why um, I forgot the scripture but it says like he um, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom we're to fear the Lord all right but in a healthy way in a in a healthy manner not fear him in, in a way that like you know um um not in an unhealthy way like you know um we're always expecting him to strike us down and always expecting him to look for a reason to send us to hell for he doesn't want anyone to perish you know but um fear him in a way that you have respect for him same way you have respect for your parents right or your elders that's the same way that's the same way that's the type of fear that he expects from us all right so i hope you took something from this i hope you like the style that i do all right this is just to try to reach the lost because like i said most lost people love to game and most lost people unfortunately idolize games and games are their life and their and it's their world i was once like that so i can relate all right if I was a lost person watching this kind of video, this would probably, um, the gospel would probably, you know, touch me through a video like this. You know, I'm trying to say, because I was just like that at some point. But anyway, hope you took something from this. Hope you had a good week and I hope you have a good weekend. Take care and God bless you guys. Bless up.